Hey friends, hey, Lois with Ellie Grace's Attic here with a lunchtime live today on this Tuesday afternoon. Um, gosh, you guys, I announced the other day sort of that I have been playing around with macrame. Um, I got this big um, spool of macrame cord uh, for my craft and chow group and I had some left over and I was like, what else can I do with this? And I made a cute feather a wall hanging and then I thought what else can I do and I had some not macrame cord this project that we're about to do or about to attempt <laughs> kind of uh, falls into that category it is a hanger you could use it for a plant or whatever but I'm not using macrame cord today I'm actually going to use rope um, but we're still gonna be tying some knots so it kind of falls into that category but I told you I was going to be back with something crafty uh, later this week, and this is it. So um, without further ado, I'll just jump into what we're doing um, and get started. So I, I kind of did some pre-work because otherwise we'd have been on here forever. So I had this circle. It was in my shop. It was left over from a previous project. You can cut your own circle. This is a uh, eighth inch Luan plywood. I use this to make my door hangers with. You could totally do something like this, cut out your own circle. You can, um, you can buy a round already. They have them at places where anywhere they sell crafts, Hobby Lobby, you can get just a plain wood circle. You can get them at Lowe's, anywhere like that, anywhere that they have uh, wood crafts. And all I did was I took my circle and I pre-drilled three holes. And I just, y'all are gonna hate me. I didn't measure, I guess I could probably, well, I didn't measure them. I did come in about, that's probably a quarter of an inch in from the side. And I just did a triangle right I did a triangle like this <laughs> there they are I just kind of did a triangle nothing like I said I just eyeballed it then earlier today I took some where is it antique wax you can totally stain this I used antique wax you could paint it whatever you want to do and I just dry brushed it and then I sealed it with some Mod Podge because this is actually going to go outside on my back porch. And I'll tell you where I'm headed here in just a second. But um, so I did all that. I dry brushed it with the antique wax and then sealed it with Mod Podge. And I had to let it dry. So that's why um, if we'd have done that on camera, it would have taken forever. So now I need to hang this. So I am using, I had this. In my stash this is rope it's found it's called decorative nautical rope it's in the floral department at the Dollar Tree it cost me a dollar 25 they should really change that to buck 25 tree <laughs> but because uh, you know most of their prices went up but hey a dollar 25 is still good so I got this this is nine feet for a dollar 25 and I picked up three of them okay so all I did today was I cut this open it's got tape on the end I cut the tape off and then I measured it depends on how long you want your thing to hang I thought mine would be good at about 24 inches two feet so I cut my rope into 26 inch I just had a yardstick and I measured out 26 inches because I want to leave room for this knot, okay? And that gives me the rest. It's still gonna probably be a little shorter than 24 inches, but hang tight and I'll show you. So I tied knots in the bottom um, and I just ran my rope up through these holes, okay? So it's, doing like so. So the knot is what the little circle is going to sit on. Okay. So now originally I did the same thing with all three pieces. 
Um, if y'all are watching, I can't see comments because hashtag bifocal. So if y'all are watching, say hi in the comments. Let me know where you're watching from, what you're up to today. Um, anyway, originally, as I was thinking macrame, macrame, what can I do with that rope that I got at Dollar Tree? And I thought I could make a little wooden shelf. And then I, my original thought was, wouldn't this be pretty? With a plant on it, but y'all know how I am with plants. I can't really grow too much. I have a terrible, <gasps> I kill everything. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not even gonna act like I can keep anything alive. I bought some ferns this weekend with my husband at Lowe's, and as I was picking them up to try to find the prettiest and fullest fern that they had for my porch, my front porch, and my back porch, every year I buy two. <laughs> And as I was picking them up and looking to see which ones were the prettiest, I was just, I just said, I'm so sorry, Fern, but you sure are beautiful. You're going to be beautiful on my porch, but I'm apologizing now. And Lenny's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm just giving my apologies now because they're going to be dead before Christmas. <laughs> it's, like, it's terrible. So I'm not even going to act like I'm putting a plant on this. I'm going to clue you in. That, well, I put it in the title. It's going to be a bird feeder, right? And I'm going to clue you in as to how this is going to turn into a bird feeder in a little bit. Um, and the reason it hit me yesterday as I was thinking about this project, I wanted to do live for you guys, um, is we have, it's springtime in North Alabama, right? And the birds are just rampant. I live in the woods, uh, surrounded by you know trees on all all sides and except for our driveway right coming in and uh we have just a plethora of birds around us and my favorites are the cardinals i have like this flock of red cardinals there's multiple I'm, usually you only see them like one at a time but they're just everywhere and i was at my window in the kitchen the other day pouring myself some afternoon coffee because let's get real everybody needs coffee in the afternoon but um so i'm making some coffee which i digress it was iced coffee i'm gonna have to share that recipe with you guys but i'm making my coffee and i look out the window and there's this the most beautiful cardinal he was big too just sitting on that branch, just looking at me, and I'm like, I wanna make a bird feeder. So what do I have, and how can I incorporate it with this shelf that I'm making into a bird feeder? So I, I have seen plenty of them on the internet made out of recycled uh, water bottles, and or I made one uh, last year, I think, with my grandkids, um, out of a orange juice carton. I've done those. I've done the ones where you have the um, toilet paper tube and you put the peanut butter on it and you roll it in the bird seed. We've done those. But I wanted something just a little nicer that maybe would last a little longer, right? So that's, that's where I was headed. So I found something that I had in my own kitchen that we're gonna turn into um, a bird feeder. So bear with me. So I have my <clears throat> scrap piece of wood that I took from my shop. Again, you can buy a circle already cut or you can cut your own. I dry brushed it with some antique wax. You can stain it or paint it. And then I put a seal on it. I use Mod Podge. You can use polyurethane. You can use um, polyacrylic, whatever you have in your garage. But Mod Podge is pretty handy. And so um, then I got this rope from the Dollar Tree, and I cut it into 23, 26 inch pieces. Tied a knot at the bottom and strung it through holes that I had pre-drilled. I just did three, you could do four, whatever's easier. So now comes the tricky part because I don't profess to be a professional knot tire, but we're gonna see what we can do. <laughs> I'm not tying a knot on this part, but we are going to do a knot in a minute. So I just gathered them up at the top, right? And I have a wood ring that I got from Amazon. You can get these. This was in the, it came in a little, it wood beads and wood rings. You could get this at Hobby Lobby. And um, y'all tell me, hey, if y'all are watching, I think that's Danielle. Danielle said she sprinkled. Let me see if I can, hold on, bifocals. I got to do this. I'm not being snobbish. I just... 
I have to look out. <laughs> oh, y'all gotta love me. Okay, <clears throat> Angel's watching. Hey, Angel. Miss Susan. Hey, hey, hey. And Danielle, Danielle, thank you for sprinkling. You're so sweet. I appreciate that. If y'all are new here, we always appreciate it when you sprinkle um, the video. That's just a fancy way to say shared. <laughs> Facebook doesn't like that word. Um, so we do appreciate that here at Ellie Grace's Attic. That helps us get seen. And so anyway, now I have my three ropes. I gathered them at the top. I'm trying to keep them close together. I put them through the little wood ring. And I'm gonna cheat and I'm gonna use some hot glue. I'm gonna kind of bring it down just a little bit farther just because I wanna give myself plenty of room to do this knot I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna try to show you, I should say. So I'm just gonna like put a good little healthy amount, big dab, whatever you wanna call it, of hot glue right here on top of those. I'm holding them together and I'm gonna take these three ends and I'm just gonna lay them down. Try not to burn yourself. I'm trying to hold it all together. Um, I'm gonna, we're gonna do a knot around this in a second. It might take a minute. I love you too, Danielle. Thank you. That's always nice to hear. All right, try not to burn yourself. Okay, I, it's mostly held together. It's not completely dry, but I just need it. So see, we have this so far, but that will hold, but we're gonna do around that what's called a gathering knot. Now, don't show this to any Boy Scouts <laughs> or any nautical people or I might be in big trouble. But like I said, I'm playing around with macrame. So I learned this knot just this weekend actually while I was working on that um, another project. And I think I got it. It's fairly simple. It's just a nice way to tie things off and it gives it kind of a finished look. So I'm gonna attempt to show you, let me put my glue gun back on its face here before I make a mess. And then this will turn into a whole different show. <laughs> All right, so I've got this little piece that I hot glued together, okay? I'm gonna try to show it to you as best I can. So I'm gonna take the end of, I, this is just a shorter piece of rope. I didn't measure it. If I had to guess, it's probably two feet, but it doesn't, as long as it's long enough to um, go around the rope, and you're gonna have some tails and that's okay because we're gonna trim those off. Um, I don't have a yardstick or I would measure it for you. But just a good, that's that's probably two. Look, I got a ruler. Let me try to give you an estimate of how much it is. So that's two. Yeah, it's at least, it's probably about 26 inches too if I had to guess. Okay, well. You throw the ruler away while this thing gets your rope. Okay. Y'all gotta love me, I'm telling you. So here's my piece that I looped through the wooden loop. I'm gonna take the end, I'm gonna hold it up. It can go up a little bit, up, you know, over your thing. I'm gonna hold that. I'm gonna come down below those ends that I cut and I'm gonna loop, okay? I'm gonna loop it up like that. Okay, I hope y'all can see what I'm doing. This is hard to do it backwards. And then I'm just gonna hold that in place. See, I got my fingers through that bottom loop and I'm gonna come around and you see my top piece is hanging out up there. I'm gonna start wrapping effectively um, as I'm going around, I'm gathering those ropes that I'm wrapping up. I still got, I'm gonna try to keep my finger in there and I'm pulling tight and I'm just going around and around and working my way down towards the bottom of my loop. You can go around, this rope is a little thick, okay, so it's not as easy to work with as like a macrame cord. Macrame cord is uh, softer, 
a little more pliable, but you can totally do this with rope, okay? So, coming around. Uh, I probably can go one more time. I'm trying to cover up those tails. Then I'm gonna take this tail and I'm gonna run it through this guy, that loop at the bottom. <laughs> and I'm just gonna pull as tight as I can and I'm gonna pull this top loop, okay? Pulling this one as tight as I can and then I'm gonna take this top tail and I'm gonna pull it up, maybe, and it's pulling it, it's, I don't know if you can see, it's pulling that tail up as tight as possible and that's what gathers it. So it's not that difficult. If I can do it, girlies, you can do it. So now I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm just gonna trim. You still be able to see the tail, a little bit of the tail, but I'm gonna trim it as close as possible to, I pulled that sucker really, really tight. And so now you've got this neat little thing. This is not as neat as it could be, but it gives it a nice finished look. And so now we have our, we're hanging, we're hanging out. And that is tight around that where I hot glued it. So it's, I don't have to worry about it coming undone out on the porch, okay? So here's our little shelf. That was pretty simple, I think. I think you totally could do this at home. You could do this with your kids. It'd be fun, a fun little exercise. And you could totally put a plant on this or something and just hang it in the corner of your house. But I wanted to do a bird feeder. So check out what I did. I'm gonna kinda just lay this flat. I went in, first of all, let me just say, I love kitchen stuff and dishes, pretty dishes. And so I collect them when I find them at garage sales, flea markets, that sort of thing. Um, and I, but do I have an actual matching set? I do not have, I will tell you this. I don't think that I have a complete service, a complete service of any china in my house. I think I might have dinner plates and bowls for eight, but yeah, because I mix match everything. So I don't have a complete service. So. I pulled out, up in my china cabinet, a teacup. I think I had eight of the saucers, but I only had seven cups. I was like, the last time I served tea with hot tea with a service was quite a long time ago. It was at a tea party for a women's ministry at church. So I thought, you know what? I'm gonna use this, nobody's gonna miss it. So my plan is, now, and let me tell you what I did. I, uh, yesterday, when I dreamed up this idea, I got out the saucer and the cup, and I got out Gorilla Glue. Gorilla Glue. This stuff will hold a lot of things. So I got that out. I took the cup and saucer out to my garage, to my shop. I put Gorilla Glue all in the saucer. I laid the, so the cup on its side, on the saucer, I got the little handle straight up just because it's pretty. And um, I clamped it with a clamp and I let it dry overnight. And so that gave me this. So it's on there. So now I'm going to take my Gorilla Glue again and I am going to glue this saucer and cup down right in the middle of my little table. And then I'm gonna take some bird feed and fill the cup and the saucer. And it's okay if it spills out onto this platform so my cardinals can eat. Isn't that sweet? So that's what we're doing. That's how we turned this wooden circle into a bird feeder. And I'm so excited. So now what I wanna do is kind of center it. I mean, the birds don't care. They only care that they get to eat, right? So I'm gonna take this, and what's really neat is, 
well, you can't see my back porch, but on my back porch, we have, uh, when you're in my living room looking out onto the back porch, I have double French doors and through that, on one side of the porch, I have a hummingbird feeder and we just love, look, I guess I'm probably, I don't know, maybe I'm just weird, but I geek out. We love watching the hummingbirds come up and eat and they're so playful and so much fun. Well, I want to put, I might cause a bird war, but I'm going to put <laughs> this bird feeder on the other end of the porch so we can watch the cardinals come up and eat. At least that's my hope. They might not. They might look at that and go, I'm not even off of that. But it'll be cute nonetheless. So anyway, I've kind of got it in the center. I've got my Gorilla Glue open. And I am just going to kind of hold it up so I don't get too far off the of center. Like I said, if you're off center, that's okay. You could totally do this, though, with, um, gosh, a bowl. You could just reuse any kind of old dishes like this. Okay, I got more than enough glue and I'm just kind of setting it. Now, I will not be able to, this is gonna have to dry overnight, right? But you could do it if you had, um, since this is going on the porch, so technically it'll be under the eaves, you could do um, like a smaller bowl. If you have some old bowls, do a smaller bowl and a bigger bowl. So you turn the, you know, the bottom bowl upside down and glue the um, other bowl upright on top. You could do, a ta you could even do a terracotta pot in here. You could, I don't know, you could reuse a lot of stuff. Um, okay, so I think we're in the center. So here we go. Ta-da! It's gotta dry. Obviously, 24 hours before I put um, bird feed in it and put it out on the porch. But I think that's a pretty whimsical and fun bird feeder. So if you're just joining us, recap. I used a wood circle I had left over from a previous project. We dry brushed it. Well, we drilled three holes in it. Then we dry brushed it with antique wax, sealed it with Mosh Posh. Then I had this handy dandy rope that I got from the Dollar Tree for $1.25, cut it into three 26 inch strands, tied a knot at the bottom, ran it through the holes, looped it in this wooden ring and hot glued it down. And then Lois tied a knot <laughs> called a gathering knot, which was pretty simple. You can watch it on the replay. And then I took my saucer and cup that I had pre-glued yesterday because it had to dry and I glued that down in the middle. So, once it's dry tomorrow, I'll put bird feed in it and hang it on the porch and post a picture for you guys. So, I hope you enjoyed this. This is kind of totally outside of my box. Like, I just dreamed this up yesterday. What am I gonna do with that uh, wooden shelf that I'm gonna make with that rope? And then I saw Mr. Cardinal staring at me and I was like, I'm gonna make a bird feeder. So sometimes it works like that. Sometimes I have a plan and uh, sometimes you just get inspired to do something crafty that's outside of the box and that's okay because I had a lot of fun making this and I hope this inspires you to do something crafty too. Get your kids involved, they love crafts and they get to work with glue, that's always fun. So anyway, I love you guys. Thanks for hanging out with me. Happy crafting and uh, I may be making some iced coffee real soon, so I'll come back and share that recipe with you live too. Love you guys. Mwah.